Welcome cyclone scientists. Today we're going to be talking about water properties. Woohoo! Yay! So before we can talk about the properties of water, we need to recap what the structure of water is. Exactly. So Ms. Sears, what is the structure of water? Well, if we look at water, we have to remember the two hydrogen, one oxygen. So you can see the hydrogen, hydrogen are the two little Mickey Mouse ears, and the oxygen is what you could call the big head of the Mickey. Okay. Um, and what you'll notice in this picture is that there are little positives and negatives on those hydrogens and oxygens. What is that about? Okay, so if you look at the oxygen and hydrogen, the hydrogen is positive and the oxygen is negative, so they go together like this, like a magnet would stick to another piece of steel or another magnet. Cool. Um, and we have a special name for molecules when they have positive and negative ends like this. What do we, what do we call molecules that have positive charges and negative charges? Positive, P, polar, they're polar. Oh, they have polar. polarity, which means they can stick to anything else that has charge, just like a magnet. Right, and just like sometimes when you're talking about the Earth, you say it has a north pole and a south pole, or a magnet has a north pole or a south pole. These these molecules are kind of like that too. Their ends are different. They have one end that's positive and one end that's negative. Exactly. Um, and what's really interesting about polar molecules is what do they tend to do when they get near one another? They stick together. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so this is going to be really important when we talk about water is we need to remember that polar molecules like to stick together. Okay, so let's go ahead and start talking about some of those properties so of water. So the first property of water that you need to know about is something called cohesion. So can you tell us about cohesion, Ms. Sears? Cohesion. Co, co-worker. We work at the same place. And in cohesion, it's two water molecules that stick together. Oh, okay, so the definition of cohesion is the attraction between water molecules when they stick to each other like two co-workers. Co -workers. <laughs> and cohesion causes water to do some really interesting things, one of which is surface tension. So what is surface tension? Surface tension is just what forms at the top of the water. Like when you have a little bubble form on your windshield, you can look at it and you can see that it has a dome shape, you know, like a half moon. One really cool example of surface tension is there are actually some animals that can walk or run across the surface of the water. And one of the coolest examples of that is right here. What do we call this lizard? That's the Jesus lizard. <laughs> it can run on water. How cool. Um, so we're going to post a video of that on the website, and you should definitely check it out. So the next property of water we're going to talk about is... Yay! Adhesion. So what is adhesion? It sounds like cohesion, but it's not quite the same. Not quite. So adhesion is when the water molecule adds itself to another material. Ah, so cohesion was when water stuck to itself, but adhesion is when water sticks to other stuff. Other stuff. Okay. Um, and this is also sometimes called capillary action. Big word, but it only means that the water molecule is sticking to something within a small area. We see lots of examples of adhesion in these pictures here. Here we've got water sticking to the surface of a plant. Um, here we have water on a, a window pane, maybe in your car or house, and it's sticking to it. Um, and here we have water actually sticking to the sides of a glass tube, um, forming something called a meniscus that you're going to learn more about in class. Okay. On to the next property of water. Great. Universal solvent. So water is really, really good at dissolving stuff. That's what a solvent is. It's something that can dissolve. Um, and the reason it's so good at it dissolving is because it's polar. What, it, what does polar have to do with dissolving? Polar. It gets back to the magnets. It can stick to other things that have a charge. So anything that has a charge can mix with water. Okay, so in this picture, we see this salt crystal, which has charges, being pulled apart by these little water molecules because they're sticking to it like a magnet. Mm -hmm. um, but this is really important here. You might want to put a little a star next to this on your paper. 
What okay. can water not dissolve? Water can't dissolve anything that doesn't have a charge. If you've ever played with oil and water, you'll see how the oil bubbles on top of the water. It's because oil is nonpolar. It has no charge. Okay. All right. Our second to last important property of water is that water has a really high specific heat. Now that's a weird sounding thing. What does it, it mean? Basically, you know when you go to the beach or the pool and you're walking along the sand and the sand burns your feet and you're like, ah, I have to get to the water. Okay. And you run to the water yeah. and you go, oh. <laughs> it's because the water doesn't get as warm as the land. It has a high specific heat, which means it doesn't heat up as fast. It takes a lot more energy to yeah. bring it up to the same level as land. Right, and also like in the winter, in the opposite side, you might walk around and see like small ponds and lakes that are frozen over with ice. But if you've ever been to the ocean in the winter time, the ocean's not frozen because water also has to, doesn't cool off very easily. It basically likes to stay at about the same temperature. Now that's really important to us um, because if you look at our planet, the blue planet, it's covered in water. And so that helps our planet to stay at about the same temperature. Right. It also helps our bodies and Obama's body to stay at about <laughs> the same temperature. Because remember, our bodies are mostly water too. Mm -hmm. Okay, the last important property of water has to do with something called density. Okay. And density is probably something you've heard about last year when you're going over weather and you're going over the density of different fronts, cold fronts compared to warm fronts. With density, it just means if you if it's more dense, it has more stuff in it and it goes down to the bottom. If we were to make up a cylinder of different substances, it would line up in order of its density with the less dense material at the very top and the most dense at the very bottom. Right, so more stuff in it equals more dense. Now, what's special or unique about water is that most things, when they become a solid, they get more dense. They have even more stuff in the same amount of space. But water is actually the opposite. When water becomes a solid, it expands. <laughs> and so it's less dense. And so, when water is a solid, what, what, what's solid water? What are we really talking We're about? We're talking about ice. Okay, right. So if I put ice into this column, where would the ice go? At the very top. Oh, okay. So the water, the solid water is going to float on the top. And that's going to be really important for guys like this who really need that water to float. That ice. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Those are the important properties of water you need to study for your first quiz. Okay, good so luck. review and good luck. See you tomorrow. Okay.